Hey guys, it's Amanda and welcome to my West Hollywood home. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. Hi, I'm Amanda Thomas. I'm the owner and designer of Love AJ Jewelry, and today we are in West Hollywood. The way I ended up in this home was very serendipitous. Um, I got divorced a couple years ago and really wanted to take my time figuring out what neighborhood I wanted to live in. I'm born and raised LA, I've always lived on the west side, but I just thought West Hollywood would be so fun, so walkable. I've got a ton of friends here. Um, but finding a house in this neighborhood was a lot harder than I thought. This was the fourth house I put an offer in. I had another one a couple of blocks away. I was in escrow, fell out of escrow. This one, when I walked in, I just felt like this was my house. I even told the realtor that, and she was so sweet and she gave me a big hug. And um, yeah, I fought to get this house, but once I got it, I just knew it was gonna be my new special home. I think what really drew me into this house to begin with was this gorgeous Australian gum tree in the front yard and my whole family's Australian, my mom is from Adelaide and I just was like, that just feels like a sign and you know, the house was a pretty basic white box but I just knew the bones were good and with some amazing paint and fixtures and marble, this place was gonna be amazing. I'm definitely well versed with renovating houses. My sister is an incredible interior designer and growing up my mom and dad always flipped houses so I feel like it's a very natural territory for me. One thing about me, if you know me, I love all my homes to be super beige, very white, very clean colors. But for some reason with this house, I was just kept thinking green. And I found this one paint swatch by Portola Paints called Grape Leaf. And it was just the most perfect green. It's actually my kitchen green. And me and my sister just decided, we're like, let's just go green. So there's a ton of green pops throughout the house and especially with the landscaping, making sure the landscaping felt like it was part of the home was really important. I think if I had to describe the style of the home, first and foremost is it's really comfy, cozy. I like to use the word cashmere. I just feel like when you walk in, you wanna like get on the couch, get under a blanket, hang out here forever. Um, I also think it is really eclectic. I used lots of green, like I mentioned, this insane purple veined Calcutta Viola all throughout the home, in the bathrooms, in the kitchen. The bathroom is this gorgeous green absinthe tile. So I think there is a little bit of fun with the color, but at the end of the day, it's so cozy and comfy and very just like California chic. Welcome to my living room. So I would definitely say this is the focal point of the house. When I first walked in, I saw the skylights. I was like, I love this room, but it needs a little more oomph. So I think one of the first things we decided to do was Roman clay all of the walls which is this gorgeous Portola Paints color. It's called Serene Thought. I think it just adds a lot of texture to the room, and I like how subtle the color is, but you can still tell that it's green. Um, I'm obsessed with travertine, so this is this amazing travertine console table I got on first dibs, and then I actually made myself little travertine slabs to put a vintage vase and my Love AJ signature candle. It's the best scent ever. I love this couch so much. This is the Restoration Hardware Cloud Couch. I actually sadly lost my original one in my divorce. So when I moved, I was like, I have to get another one. It's the best investment. It's so comfy. I just went with a really clean perennials fabric. So if you spill stuff on it, it's really easy to get off. 
And I just decided to pop a little green with the pillows. And then these are these gorgeous Pearson Ward champagne velvet pillows. I think it added a lot of really nice texture. And this piece here is so special to me. My friend Jonathan painted it for me. He was just like, name random things and objects that feel very Amanda, so I did, and he put it together. My dad had Porsches growing up, so I love Porsches. Got a little chain for the jewelry. We've got the palm tree, because I love Palm Springs. We go there all the time, so this piece is super special. Um, also in this room, I've never done this before, but we played with different types of wood. Usually I stick with one, but if you see this table, it's kind of a lighter wood, and then this gorgeous chair is a little bit darker, and then you get to the bookcase, which is two-tone, and I think it's fun to play with all of the different wood colors. These two pieces are so ho home. This is my favorite chair. I love to sit here, because I can like have my drinks, and I can work on my laptop, so this is, my, this is like my work chair. I take Zooms here all the time. And then the bookcase is so cool, and I just wanted to throw all of my tchotchkes and things that I've collected over time. This is like a little weird crab I got in Bali. This is a pineapple thing I just got in Mexico on vacation. This is from my parents' childhood home. So this is very eclectic. It's my favorite books. Lots of plants too because I just wanted to feel really fresh and green. And the best part of the living room, which I have talked about before, but this is the gorgeous window. So this actually wasn't here when I first got the house. And I just think it completely changes the entire room. You can sit here, almost feel like you're outdoors. This is an Australian gum tree. It's original to the home. It's very mature and yeah, I just think it's totally gorgeous. And also you can see back here, I did all these amazing vintage potted plants, lots of greenery, just so it's green on green on green. In the corner here, I have this really cool vintage pot I got in Palm Springs. I go to Palm Springs all the time. I've got a place out there and I love vintage shopping. They've got the best finds, best scores. So I got this, I liked the height of it and I felt like I could really command the corner and kind of bring the outdoor indoor as well with the plant inside. One of my favorite pieces of art in the house is this incredible porcelain chainmail piece by Taylor Kibbe. I found her on Instagram. I had her custom make this. I used to actually make chainmail jewelry. Um, back in the day, I literally worked with this Canadian company that would make suits of armor for movies. So I had them do like chainmail hand pieces and necklaces. So when I saw her work, I was like, I have to get a piece. And I just think it's the perfect thing you see right when you walk into my house. This rug is actually just vintage on Etsy. Etsy has the best rugs, you guys. Really well priced. Um, I thought the red tone would be kind of fun to pick up in the cherry color and also play off with the green as a contrast. And I'm really happy with how it looks with the floors as well. I actually spend most of my time in this room working because I feel like it has such good light. I don't feel crazy if I'm on my laptop all day. The light really changes and I feel like it's such a nice vibe. This is my work chair. Um, but when I have friends over, the couch is where we are at. We are drinking Reposado, watching Vanderpump Rules, under blankets. It's the comfiest, coziest spot. I'm obsessed with these sconces, just flanking this gorgeous piece. The sconces are by Henny Pinmade, and they're this amazing frosted glass with wood, which also really picks up on the table and the chair. It's a really cool mixture of wood and glass. Um, speaking of glass, two of my favorite mirrored pieces in here. First is this table. This is like, this has been with me in so many homes. I just feel like it's so quintessential Love AJ. It's covered in real Brazilian quartz crystals all around the edge. It's a bit of a hazard. I feel like if I ever have kids, I probably have to get rid of it, but I love how it looks. And this mirror has also traveled with me to many homes. This is so Love AJ too. Um, I feel like this goes with the theme of Mandy's jewel box where it has the chain link all around. This is vintage from One King's Lane. I've been a jewelry designer in LA since I was 14 years old, which is crazy. It's over 20 years, not to age myself too much, but um, yeah, so I always have a real sensibility with 
accessories and the tiny details and things like I love hardware and fixtures and when we first started this project we actually named it Mandy's Jewel Box because it is a really really tiny home but it's perfect it's like the perfect size just for me and I just wanted to make sure there was like little jewels in every single room so whether it's the gorgeous chainmail art piece when you first walk in or the amazing golden mushroom shaped um, cabinet knobs in my bedroom. Even with the chandelier in the kitchen, that almost looks like it could be like a sculptural stud earring that we made. Or just the kitchen with the mix of brass and green and purple. I just wanted to make sure the home felt like there was jewel-like elements all throughout it. A lot of the sconces around the house too are made from natural stone and I just feel like that is so love AJ because that's an actual material I use in my jewelry like season to season. And this is the kitchen. This is the ultimate green room. This is kind of where all the green started was with the cabinetry. The cabinets are this amazing green color by Portola Paints called Grape Leaf. That was the inspiration for all the green amongst the house. So we did the cabinets in Portola and then the countertops are the coolest. It's Calcutta Viola and I did it honed so it kind of has like a matte finish. I was nervous to have real stone in my kitchen. I usually have some sort of like fab fabricated top but my sister told me just lean into it if you get lemon stains or you spill wine or whatever it's all about the patina so that is what I'm going with I really like this window we actually added this just to bring in a little bit more light and I just think in the morning when I'm making my little lemon water it's just a really nice vibe over here um, this plant like can we just take a moment for this plant this plant is so gorgeous I actually saw it on Instagram it's from the house plant, H-A-U-S plant. Um, and I went to their gorgeous nursery and I picked it up and I just think it is so beautiful, so sculptural and really just goes with the whole vibe of the kitchen. When I first got the house, it was giving very like West Hollywood apartment vibes. It was all this really kind of ugly dark walnut it had the uh, microwave over the oven, which I feel like is so quintessential WeHo apartment. So we took that out, put the microwave down here, and then we actually Roman clayed the hood. So I feel like this really ties in with the walls, but it is a slightly different color, so it differentiates it. Um, I'm not the biggest cook, but I do know how to make delicious crispy scrambled eggs. So I make those every morning. My boyfriend likes to make his pour over coffee, so we do use the kitchen all the time. It's small, but it's mighty. Next is the rug. This is also vintage Etsy. This was, you guys, this was impossible to find. A green runner rug in a very strange size, but once again, Etsy came through. I love this. I think it really grounds the space. It was a little bit too much open area here, and also if I'm cooking and spilling things, the rug catches it, which I love. Um, another focal part of the kitchen is this insane Calcutta Viola frame that we did. So I opened up this wall to make it a little bit bigger so it just felt more open coming from the living room to the kitchen. But this was like a last minute thing. I actually saw it on Pinterest and I was like, do we have enough marble to do this? And we did. And I just think it is the ultimate finishing touch to the room. It makes all the photos look amazing. So I'm really happy this turned out really well. So this is the breakfast nook in the kitchen. When I first saw the house, this was so ugly. It was really dark. It had a really lame chandelier. Just was not a vibe. But my sister came up with the concept of doing an actual built-in sofa. And I just think it feels so much more homey and comfy and cozy and cashmere like I was talking about. So this couch is six penny home. The pillows are Lulu and Georgia. And then this table is really cool. This is actually travertine pedestals that I got, same vintage store in Palm Springs. And I just got a piece of glass fabricated and put on top. So it's kind of nice too when people are here, you can kind of like 
push it in and out so it's very convertible. Um, this chandelier is stunning. It's by Sputnik Lights. They're also on Etsy. They do all this gorgeous handcrafted brass. Um, it's very mid-century modern, but I also felt like it feels very Love AJ. It almost looks like they're little shell earrings or you know little pendants you can wear on a necklace. When I was thinking about what artwork I wanted in the kitchen nook, I actually found this scarf on the real reel. It's a John Paul Gaultier scarf. I don't really even understand how you would wear it, but I love framing pieces of fabric. I think it looks really special and I love all the texture and like ripples in it. So I got this piece framed and I did this light wood to kind of pick up the wood that's in the living room and I just think this is so perfect here. This isn't my first undertaking with a home. I'm a crazy person and I had just finished renovating my house in Pacific Palisades, but once I moved in, I was like, I'm not a Palisades girl. So I was only in that house for a year and then I moved to West Hollywood. This house is considered a bungalow style house. It's really, really small, but it also has a good backyard and like a little guest house as well, which is very, very typical for this neighborhood in West Hollywood. And welcome to the powder room. So this is my guest bathroom. I wanted this to be moody and be just a fun place to take a selfie if you're over here for dinner or hanging out. Also did Roman clay on these walls, just a much darker green. I had some fun with all of the fixtures. So this is extra of the Calcutta Viola that you saw in the kitchen, but we did it polished instead. Um, this vanity plus all the hardware is signature hardware. And I did this really dark bronze because I thought it really pulled out the purple in the veins of the Calcutta Viola. So the floors and the shower are actually one of the only things that are original to the house that I did not change. I felt like it actually looked kind of cool and adding the dark Roman clay on the walls was really gonna make it feel a little more intentional. Let's talk about the mirror. The, like I literally made the whole bathroom based on the mirror. The mirror is by Concrete Cat. They are a concrete company based out of Montreal. And I saw this mirror on Instagram in pink. And I was like, I have to have it. So I had them custom make it in green to try to match the walls. And I just think it's so cool. This sconce up here is also by Sputnik Lights, who did the gorgeous chandelier in my breakfast nook. They just make really amazing, handmade looking mid-century pieces, so I love them. And then this is like this really cute little snake that I got at a local shop um, down the street in West Hollywood. I just love how dark and moody and special this bathroom is. Now that we've seen the powder room, I'm gonna show you guys the primary suite of the house. So when I first got the house, the master bathroom was like a serious puzzle to me. It was an odd shape. The room wasn't long enough to put a proper shower and a built-in bathtub. The shower just felt so tiny. So my sister and contractor came up, with, came up with this idea of doing a wet room. So the bathroom is just this giant open room with one little glass door and the shower and the bathtub are in the same area and I just feel like I'm in a literal spa. And this is the primary bathroom. So this is my little haven. I hang out in way too many hours of the day. Um, once again, we did the Calcutta Viola here, which I love, and this really, really dark bronzed hardware as well from Signature Hardware. I just think it really matches the marble so well. One thing that I had to have in this bathroom, I stayed at this hotel once in Hawaii when I was a teenager, and they built a little lip with the marble above the sink, and I was like, that's so genius, because you can put all your products. So this is my makeshift Sephora store, AKA my bathroom. I have so many products, it's kind of crazy. And there wasn't a ton of storage, so this is a great place for me to be able to see everything, not forget about an expensive serum that I bought. Um, and I even let my boyfriend have a couple things on his side. So once again, the walls in here are Roman clay as well. The color is called Thumper by Portola Paints. This is actually the same color of the hood that's in the kitchen. Um, we did floor to ceiling as well. I just think it really makes the room feel encapsulated and it just really elevates it. 
These mirrors are signature hardware as well. I love that they've got the LED light. It almost acts like a ring light. I film all of my Love AJ TikToks in here. So this is the bathroom slash wet room that we created. This wall is really short and I wanted to have a big shower but also wanted a tub. So this just felt like the best option. So in here we have this amazing signature hardware tub and I just tilted it on the side. But I think it's kind of cute. It kind of feels like a hotel vibe. And then this is the open wet room. So we have the big ginormous 12 inch rainwater um, for the shower, which I love. This built-in in juxtaposition with this tile I think is so gorgeous. It's very unique. I know this isn't like a typical bathroom, but I just think it works so well together. This tile is by Zia Tile and the color is called Absinthe. I really liked the variety as well. You've got some of these darker ones, some of these lighter ones, and then up here, I just did lots of green plants because I think it just really brings the outdoors indoors. This is truly one of my favorite places just to take a break in the, in the middle of the day. I'm known for my 4 p.m. baths. I think it's so fun to get in the bath when the sun is still out with the skylight and the tub and the window. It is just the most relaxing vibe ever. So my bedroom obviously was the most important for me because I spend a lot of time in my bed and I wanted to make the room really feel like a hotel room. So there wasn't a lot of storage and I thought up this idea of doing this amazing built-in so it would have the TV plus cabinets and big giant armoires. So I worked with our fabricator and it turned out so amazing. We did this really gorgeous dark wood. I got to have fun with all of like the knobs and I just think the room literally feels like I've checked into a hotel and I love that. This is my hotel room as I like to call it. I really wanted it to feel super luxurious, very zen and peaceful and I love how it turned out. So. Let's start with the built-in because I'm actually very proud of this. I drew this on a napkin and got my fabricator to make it and it turned out so amazing. So we've got the TV here flanked with these amazing Kelly Wurstler sconces. I did the back of this fluted as well because I felt like it looked like a Soho house hotel room. So I was like, that's a vibe. Um, you know, I've got my little travertine trays and crystals and then up here I've got even more tchotchkes and books. I just felt like it added some personality to the whole built-in. Um, then I've got these amazing ginormous drawers where I fit everything and the knobs are by Firm Living. They're these really cute little brass mushrooms and I just felt like they looked like, I don't know, a little piece of Love AJ jewelry. Then I have these amazing ginormous armoires, which you can see here. So I have all my clothes, I can stack all my shoes. So I've got two sides, which is great because I have a lot of clothes. And moving to Mandy's jewel box is hard because this place is really small. So I had to edit down what I wear, but it was good for me anyways. This is my bed. I got a custom bed made with community manufacturing. They're great because you can pick all of your fabrics. You can pick the exact type of bed that you want. So I just went with like a traditional beige boucle. All of the bedding is parachute. I did a little mix of beige and there's sage. And I think obviously tying in the green was necessary. Side tables are restoration hardware. I had lighter beige ones, but I just felt like I needed to tie in like a darker wood to match the built-in. And then the lamps are so sick. These are Soho Home and it's this amazing big chunky blue marble ridged base. Um, I think it's just really gorgeous and a nice mix of like blues and greens and beiges and I think it ties in well with the darker tone of the wood. And then this piece next to my bed, this is actually, this is actually one of the nicest gifts I've ever been given. My sister got me this. This is an original print from Alexander McQueen's designer that did all of his skulls. In like 2001, he started making all this skull jewelry and I was obsessed with it. So my sister got me an original print from the artist that actually designed the skulls. So yeah, I love it in my bedroom and I think the pink is kind of fun playing against the beige and the blue. 
And the rug in the room, no surprise guys, it's Etsy. This is another one from the exact same dealer. I got the red rug in the living room. He just has such amazing stuff. And once again, I needed like a really big area rug and I didn't want to spend that much money. So it was perfect. It's like a vintage Turkish rug. And now that you've seen my bedroom, I'm going to take you to the next part of my oasis, which is the backyard. Curating the backyard to make sure it felt like my little oasis was so important. It had a nice amount of space to do little fire pit, outdoor seating, and it has the cutest miniature pool. It's like a pool slash jacuzzi. So I actually did checkered tile all throughout the backyard. Um, and I just think it really, really makes the space look so elevated. And then I went crazy on the landscaping. I was like, let's make it feel like Tulum meets Montecito. So there's lots of lavender, olive trees mixed in with giant palm fronds. I think it's a really special mix of the two kinds of plants. The space is small, but I wanted to make sure I really utilized all the areas of it. This side has the pool slash jacuzzi. It's small, but it heats up so fast. I love using it as a jacuzzi. I put two chaises here, so it really did feel like we're at a hotel. I actually lay out here all the time with my laptop and my umbrella, just doing some work when it's really hot during summer. And I was mentioning before, I wanted the landscaping to feel kind of like Montecito meets Tulum. And I feel like we really nailed it back here. We've got some olive trees, which are very Montecito. But then we also have these gorgeous palm fronds, which are very Tulum. And then you can see throughout all the landscaping, I've got pops of purple, pops of yellow. I think it's really nice to have a little bit of color. In the corner, you can see my giant candles. I had these at my old house, It's except it's been getting so hot, they're kind of melting a little bit, but I just think these are really cool to flank the pool as like a little art piece. And then I had extra Calcutta Viola. You guys are really like, how much marble did this girl buy? But I had my marble fabricator make a top for this little dark bronze side table. This is the same bronze as all the hardware inside, so it really ties it all in. The house came with this really cute mini guest house garage. So I tried to convert it into my mini gym. So I have a treadmill in here and then the best part, I actually shouldn't tell you guys because now people are gonna try to come over all the time, but I put a sauna back here. And I seriously use that thing like four to five days a week. It's the best. So this is like my health and wellness little mini guest house. Besides hanging out outside by myself all the time, I love to have friends over, pop in the pool, especially when it's super hot. This is the perfect pregame spot if we're going to dinner down the street to Craig's or Chaconi's. Everyone will come here first. We'll have tequilas and just hang out by the fire pit. It is just the best, coziest outdoor spot. I had a vision where I was like, oh, I wanna have a dining table. Then I was like, I don't really cook. So this is just perfect. I have a big couch, this whole living outdoor living setup is CB2 and then I just put a really nice fire pit out here during summer months this is where everyone is and I wanted to do a mirror outside I always saw that at people's houses and I just thought that was so cute so this is a Burke decor mirror it's also not for outdoors so we'll see how long this lasts but I think it's really pretty I like how it fills up the wall space especially when you're sitting here it just makes the backyard feel so much bigger what I love the most about my home has to be the front window. So when I was first doing renovations, there was no front window and I didn't even know it was possible, but I talked to my neighbor and he told me that my house used to be all glass. And I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, your whole house was glass, but the last owner changed it and drywalled everything. So I asked my contractor and he was like, we'll open a wall and check check it out and see if we can do it. And lo and behold, we were able to put a gorgeous giant glass window right in the front of the house. So it really accents that Australian gum tree that I love. It also creates the most amazing light. And then I made this really lush landscaping moment in the front with all these pots. So when you're in the living room, you almost feel like you're outside. And I love that the most. So when I first got the house, it was actually white which was fine, but I just felt like painting it green could really add some character to it. So this was the second green color we landed on. 
Um, if you followed me on Instagram, you saw that I did a poll and I like totally picked the wrong color, painted the whole house this like key lime green, it was not it. So we switched and did this darker green and I think it's so much better. It really also looks great with the black door. So I love how it turned out. This is the beautiful gum tree that I love. This is what you see through the window. I added some little fancy lights. Those are from Etsy as well. You know I love Etsy. And then I wanted this whole front just to be super lush, super green. So I've started collecting pots. Um, I've had pots in my last few places, so I keep adding more. And yeah, I just have fun going to Rolling Greens and like picking out different plants. And I really love how all of this turned out. Home means comfort, cashmere, and calm. When I'm home, I want to feel like I'm just in my safe place. I feel like I can be relaxed. My home is now the place that I work as well, so it's really important for me that I have different areas where I can kind of change my mindset. Like my bedroom is where I relax and watch TV. My office is where I work. My backyard is where I hang with friends and entertain. So just making sure I just always feel calm, happy, and relaxed at my home is so important to me. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.